Hi there, True Believers. It's me, Rob Lockhart, and I'm here to explain the details of how the rune language works. A lot of you been a have been asking for this, so here we are. Uh, let's get started. Let's talk about types. The first thing to know is there are only four types, and one is sort of a subset of the others. There's the command type, which is rectangular. There's numeric type, which is circular. There's a subset, which is variables. And they're, they're sort of circular, but with these little notches. And then there's booleans, which are diamond shaped. So that's all the types there are. Now there's some constraints, like every line has to begin with the command type. So for example, you've already seen things like a command followed by a number. These are the basic motions, repeat, there's if, repeat if, Set and finally call. So you've already seen repeat in action. And all of these are pretty basic. Forward, right, left, attack. So let's go through the rest of these. The if rune works precisely how you think it would, just from the sound of it. It takes one argument and forms a code block. That argument is Boolean. So all this says is if true, turn right once, and then this ends the code block. Repeat if is what you think of as like a while loop. So, well, this if true makes this turn right happen once. This repeat if, or while, true, makes this entity turn right continuously forever. So this is a way of making an infinite loop. Repeat if, true, turn right once.
Let's talk about some more interesting Boolean cases. So, for instance, one Boolean you could use is greater than, and we have a constant that looks like an eyeball. This tells you how many empty spaces are in front of my creature. So we could also use the greater than So what this says is, is the number of empty spaces in front of my creature greater than zero? And that's useful for things like the following. So now what you're saying is, go forward unless there's nothing unless there is no empty space in front of you so basically your creature will go continuously in a straight line until it comes to an obstacle and then stop let's build another interesting variation so what if we wanted our creature to keep going forward stop if there's uh, an obstacle in the way, and then try and uh, attack the obstacle. We just want our creature to move in a straight line no matter what, but if it encounters an obstacle, then attack. So now what this is saying is, continuously move forward. If there's something in your way, if there's the spaces, the free spaces in front of you is less than one, then attack three times. If not, you can skip this and just go forward again. As I'm sure you remember, there are numeric types, and then there are variable types. The beauty of this scheme is that you can see just by looking at them that if there is a circular slot, then either of these could go into it. But if there's a slot shaped like a variable with notches in it, then only the variable type can go in. So where we see that is with the set function or command. So, with, with the set command, we need a variable on the left and some numeric type or variable on the right. So we can set this variable, say, to uh, 3 Or, we can set it to the number of empty spaces in front of your character. Or, a 
another variable. or even the result of some calculation. This variable is being set to itself plus one. That's a very common pattern in programming, so it's good to be able to express it in one line. Now let's talk about call. I'm sure you've seen the tablet interface. It's got this black spell area where you'll actually write your spells. It's got the shelf where you have all your runes. And then it's got the clear button right here. What you haven't seen yet, because it's not activated in the tutorial, is this selector, which begins at zero. It's, an, it's a number, just like all the others, but when you change its, uh, when you change its value, it switches to a new spell zone. So you can imagine it as if there are six of these stacked on top of one another. And every time you change the selector, you switch which one is on the front. Now, that does two things. That allows you to save spells for later. Um, so you can write something on one spell zone and then switch to another and um, and what you've done in your in the other spell zones will be preserved but you can also use the call command to call into other spell zones so Here's what the call function will look like to start. So this is saying call spell zone zero and set this variable to this value. So uh, by default, the, there's a, a first variable that's the most important. And you can specify that when you call uh, this other spell zone, you're going to change the value of that variable. So I can actually use any numeric type in here. We can uh, use just a number. And then this will actually automatically set. Now, you can use that to call into uh, another spell that you've saved, but you, it, you can also use it to uh, call you can also use it to call into the spell that you're in right now. And this is what allows recursion, which is the final concept that we introduce in the game. So let's go through all the concepts.
basic sequential commands. We've got iteration. We've got conditionals. We've got conditional iteration. We've got function calling. We've also got variables and the ability to set those variables. We've got constants. This one tells you how much health you have. We've got booleans, like false, and also boolean commands, like less than. Uh, we've got arithmetic operators is mod 6 because there's no numbers above 5 and we've even got boolean operators like So those are all the concepts. I'm just going to write out every single rune on the board now. So that's all the concepts that we're introducing in Codemancer and all the rooms that you'll see. It looks like a lot now, but they'll be introduced one at a time very slowly and hopefully uh, simply. So thanks for watching and thanks for backing Codemancer. See you next time, true believers.